My name is Rick Roberts, and I'm the um, the writer of Orestes, the playwright, I guess the adapter, Euripides wrote the original. I'm doing this all from home because of COVID. Orestes was originally meant to be performed uh, in September uh, in the, the Tarragon Theater space. And then as we all know, over the course of the year, uh, that became less and less possible. So Richard asked me at some point during the summer, uh, as this, you know, the everything was going into flux because it was already an online themed play that would I want to adapt it uh, for the internet. I thought for two seconds about it and I kind of said yes. And it is now this unusual new thing which is an amalgam of theater and the internet. This play, Orestes, it struck me that the um, Orestes and Electra in particular were being let down by the older characters in the play and I felt a really modern connection with that. My kids I think could be described as millennial. I keep hearing all this stuff about um, how millennials are lazy or entitled, and it really wasn't my experience with my kids or my my kids' friends. I saw a lot of uh, creative people, a lot of hardworking people who were being really frustrated by the world that they had inherited from us, the older generation. And it felt to me like there's something in this play, in the in the plight of Orestes, in the original, and then in the adaptation, which is quite different that he had been put in a, a no-win situation and all the older people who should have been supportive of him uh, let him down and then turns the play into this really uh, dark, dark area. But all the events of the play happen in uh, the, the public eye and in the original public meant one thing and in our time public also includes online, which kind of messes with the idea of what space is, uh, what does location and, and time, like an event really doesn't happen in its own time anymore, it kind of happens and echoes into online. And sometimes people don't participate in the event itself. They participate with an eye towards uh, how they're going to monetize it or how it's going to reflect them online. Lots of people out there, you know, holding their phones up, uh, kind of uh, recording something for a different space. So that kind of shifted my notion of what the chorus was and then it kind of just uh, blew up the, the whole play. It's one of those things when you, when you work on something, uh, you, it's now, what it is now is I think what it was meant to be and I don't think it could really ever be played in the theater again anymore. And I d kind of don't want it to be and I kind of feel that there's something really uh, thrilling about it belonging to this time and really having this is its life, this is what it is. And when Richard said, you know, originally saying, if you do this, you know, it may never be performed on stage and kind of go, I just uh, am really interested in it. And it's actually brought out more, I think, of what the play is, which is what is the internet? Uh, how does it affect identity? What are our bodies uh, when part of our identity lives in this space. What is this space? What is the space of online? How does it affect the real world? How does it affect politics? How does it affect reality when everyone has their own version of what real is now? And, and where do you go to find real? And in a lot of ways, the uh, the rehearsal process has been a really strong echo of what it would be like in a, in a room, except the room now is a, is a Zoom room. Uh, you know, they rehearse scenes and you do rewrites and and uh, so that part has been really great and it's been like a real godsend in terms of uh, what's happened this year in terms of you know theater community and really uh, touching base with people that I love and people that I admire and watching them work and and watching you know words and theater real theater exist in that space and that that part's been very interesting. Mm -hmm.